Hello, uh, I'm José Bolo from the company IoT Biz Page. I'm here to present you how we leveraged uh, OpenID Connect to improve security of our embedded system. The main component that I will present you is named SecGate OpenID Connect or Secure Gateway. So, welcome to ARS, that's the event that uh, is uh, uh, presenting my talk. And I'm from IoT Business Age, a company that is uh, located in France, in a country named uh, La Bretagne. We worked on AGL for the first version of the application framework and we use it at the moment to create a new distribution whose name is uh, Red Pesk OS, whose intended to be a long-term support distribution for embedded system. So what I will present you is the secure gateway and now I will talk about why we did it. The secure gateway is a component that comes in a, a wide system. It's the connector uh, that is that allows people to uh, identify themselves and get access to internals of the embedded system. The way it works is that it's connected to uh, social uh, identity provider that can grant that the people that is here is the people that it claims to be. This is uh, used to uh, grant accesses to uh, protected uh, items of the system. So the main idea is that each access to the system goes through the secure gateway. When authenticated, uh, the client gets access to part of the system that is protected or is denied to access it. The masterpiece is that we use OpenID Connect uh, to get the access. Uh, OpenID Connect is a flexible standard and it is uh, widely supported by the major. Also, it has a design that allows extension. Well, primarily, uh, OpenID Connect delivers information on the user, but not on the user as being its name, but as the user being what it claims to, to be itself then we can, in some circumstance, get more information about the user. Let's go in that. OpenID Connect is a protocol normalizing that is based on top of OS2, an authentication protocol that is also used internally by Secure Gateway. And it enables to verify the identity that a user claims to have and to get some profile information about it. If possible, but not always. Anyway, it's a protocol uh, based on SAML2, but rewritten for uh, JSON REST. And it is widely supported by major operators. Uh, in this presentation, we will uh, use words. Mm, these words. OS2 protocol, it's a protocol of authorization that is uh, widely used. Authorization server, this is a server that 
accept to deliver authorization. So you need to present some grants and you get authorized. It delivers a token that allows you to ask a token server to get a token to access uh, resources. On top of that, OpenID uh, normally is the fact that you can get a token to get identity uh, data or profiles. Then what is an identity provider is an OpenID server that delivers you OpenID identity. Based on that, we can trust or not uh, the fact that the user is what it claims to be based on uh, trust on the identity provider or on the protocol it follows to get identity. So we manage levels of assurance in what the user uh, is with uh, a level of assurance of zero, we don't trust the user. We don't know who he is. With a level of assurance of one, well, we trust it. But less than with a level of assurance of two or three. So it's partly um, normalized and it's used into our system uh, to access uh, protected resource uh, using bear token that has that are tokens uh, that opens bearers. The secure gateway managed to have uh, several identity provider. It's a benefit because uh, we can have a fallback in case of uh, lake or uh, issue in accessing an identity uh, provider. Uh, it, it, it means that we have to uh, connect the identity of some user uh, for uh, more than one identity provider that's named federation. Uh, we can federate identity, that's a particular thing. We can also require to have two uh, authentication for enforcing the security. Well, open the new chapter now. Um, we will speak more precisely about uh, the secure uh, gateway and how it works and its uh, mechanism. The well, principles are that each access must be um, transport layer secure, otherwise it's denied. That's imposed by the OAuth protocol, by OpenID protocol, so let's go TLS. You can optionally add a client certificate to increase the trust that you have in your uh, client. Well, on accesses to an unprotected resource, normal service, uh, unprotected resource are open in public. Um, but accesses to um, uh, forbidden or protected resource uh, is uh, not possible if you are not authenticated. So if you're not authenticated and try to access a protected resource, you are redirected to an authentication server that will authenticate you and then uh, redirect it back to the service that now knows your uh, identity, uh, that you are what you claim to be. And the on, based on, on what you what is your right, I know it's uh, configured in the system, your access will be either uh, forbidden because you, you are what you are and you cannot access this resource or 
grantee because, well, that's okay. Uh, when you're not authenticated, what happens is that um, uh, you are redirected to an authentication server for starting the authentication procedure. Well, uh, it uh, implies that you are connected to internet. We also provide some local uh, server that can be used without internet. Uh, for example, with the pluggable authentication module of Linux, or uh, using uh, some devices like uh, a SIM card or uh, NFC uh, type, fingerprint that is linked to uh, pluggable authentication system. Anyway, uh, if you're not authenticated, you first have a page that uh, gives you a choice between uh, several uh, pro identity provider services. You choose and then get to the identity provider that authenticates you and delivers a token access to the uh, secure gateway. Mm, this is the summary of the um, conversation between the client, the service, the identity provider. So it explains briefly with a graphic what I already said before. Based on that, um, the state of the connection of the user is managed. So either at the beginning you are unknown, then you enter in an authentication process, and either you are authenticated or not. Well, if you are authenticated, you are known, and uh, we, the system knows what are the resources that you can access. At the end, either on expiration or explicit or implicit disconnection, uh, the connection is uh, turned back to unknown. Okay, the data provided by the identity provider uh, uh, on strict OpenID Connect protocol are uh, very few. You have two things. Uh, the identity of the identity provider itself and an identifier of the user uh, in the context of that identity provider. Well, um, if you master the OpenID or the identity provider, you can also implement some claims, specific claims, um, <clears throat> that can add data about the user. But you have to know the, to, to master the identity provider. Well, let's open a new chapter. Mm, the management, because you have a system now, uh, how to tune it, how to create it. Let's get in. Here is the use case. The main thing of our concern is the operator. The operator that comes on the equipment and wants to connect with its identity uh, first must authenticate to the identity provider. The identity provider knows the operator because the operator's manager has set up the operator and its role. On the system side, when con the identity of the operator is known, uh, the edge equipment has to know what are the permission granted for the role given to the operator. This is set by the fleet supervision uh, 
because, well, uh, these equipments are not one that is uh, created and managed like a, com a com personal computer. It's an equipment that is uh, self and uh, that's not unique. Let's check that. First, to the easiest part, uh, management of operator. So, the manager of the operator is uh, in charge of uh, setting the system for the operator, giving him roles and permissions. Uh, that's a role-based system. We think it's the simplest way to uh, provide permissions to a, uh, an operator. Internally, the secure gateway don't use the word of uh, role, but it uses the word of uh, attributes. So a user gets attributes uh, to its identity, and these attributes maps well to roles, groups, permissions, etc. <coughs> Fleet management is a situation more complex. Uh, you have to manage equipment that you uh, sell and that is numerous. So uh, you provide a configuration statically at the beginning and then maybe you can update the configuration but it leads to a situation where some equipment are uh, up to date and some others are not because they had uh, um, connectivity issues uh, to the updating system. Um, on the fleet management side also you have to establish a connection between uh, the roles and the attributes given at the identity provider and the exact permission that the user has uh, inside the system. And you have to do that for each identity provider because identity provider maybe have not the same uh, logic or attributes. Uh, you have to set up uh, the, the identity providers, you have to set up the authorization server, etc. Uh, for each one. And there is maybe several uh, identity providers that you have to set up and its configuration is not so easy. You have to be precise. Um, Setting up uh, an identity provider uh, requires you to uh, establish, uh, to, to, to declare a secure gate application to the identity provider, uh, getting a client ID for the secure gateway, uh, the secret ID, some redirections URL have to be registered, and you also need some time to, to tell what is the flow that has to be used. Um, setting it is sometimes easier when you have a well-known discovery entry point for identity provider. Otherwise, you have to set up each configuration. Then you have to configure a profile, setting, telling, well, for this identity provider, uh, this scope, these rules and attribute, and I have this level of assurance and I give these permissions. <coughs> you have to provide uh, for the re redirection page uh, icons uh, and uh, the, the, the URL of the login page. This is an example of uh, configuration uh, showing how to set a, an identity provider. Then here you have a UID that is one login that is logically linked to the one login uh, set. Um, this one is easy to uh, set up because it has a well-known uh, discovery entry point. Then you set what is the login page, the icon, and here 
you tell what are the trusts that you have uh, based on the scope uh, granted by the client. Um, well, let's speak now about the implementation of the security on the edge side. Um, at first, you have an authentication. Here, the OpenID process of uh, authenticating is uh, abstracted in this small square. And when you are authenticated, the secure gateway uh, provides you permissions to the Synagora database for the session uh, of the client. Then when the client access to some service, um, its session is first checked by the secure gateway, then the service uh, that requires permissions asks Synagora for the permission, if it's granted or not, similar answers and the service is uh, satisfied or not. So, as I said, <coughs> on the edge side, we have to connect uh, works between the roles given by the identity provider and uh, the permissions uh, of the system. Um, on the edge side, we encourage uh, service uh, developers to have a fine grain of permission. Uh, the security is better if it's the case. Uh, but conversely, you have a, a big amount of permissions and uh, it's not really easy to uh, tune. So uh, we have to manage the permissions by groups. So we allow to map permissions to one or more group of permission. Conversely, for identity provider, we have roles, we have attributes, we have level of assurance. Um, then we map an identity provider, a level of assurance and given attributes to a set of uh, permission group, then the match is done. Let's see how it works on the basic um, configuration file. Um, on the left, you have the mapping of identity provider to uh, permission groups, then as you see, if you come from IOTBZH that identified you um, with the attribute setup, if the level of assurance is two, you get the group setup. Otherwise, you get the group edit. But if you have the LOI two then you have also have the LOI of zero and you get also edit. On the right side, you see the configuration for um, permissions. We simplified a lot the name of the permission, but it's given that the permission admin is linked to the group admin. The permission setup is linked to the groups admin and setup. We also have a mechanism for pattern uh, settings. Now, the Synagora binding, that is a component that uh, is used to manage uh, Synagora internally and provide the session. So it's an agent, it's a binding. Service access Synagora binding and uh, delivers permission. Synagora access Synagora binding agent to check unknown um, uh, sessions. And then Synagora binding that has the mapping of permissions, role, and attribute uh, 
answers based on this issue. That's Sinagara binding, as it's seen on the top right, that manage the, the, the permission database mapping uh, roles and permissions. So in one side, it speaks to the service that knows role, identity provider, level of assurances, attributes. And on the other side, it speaks to Synagora that knows sessions, permissions, and it fills the gap. This is now time to have a larger view and uh, speak about the modularity that is implemented in the Secure Gateway. Um, the Secure Gateway now um, is an extension of the binder, that's a new feature of the binder. So it is a binder, but with extensions that gives him a uh, new feature, like uh, filtering connection and loading plugins and bindings. Today, we have built-in modules for LDAP, uh, OS2, OpenID Connect. We have pluggable modules for uh, NFC and uh, PAM, that is pluggable authentication module for Linux. <clears throat> we have a plan for further extension like open banking with OpenID, FedID, Fed uh, Financial Grade API, FAPI, FAPI, English. Time now for a short demo of the system. Uh, welcome to this uh, demonstration of uh, the secure uh, gateway. Uh, so what we can see here on this screen is we have uh, three uh, security zones going from uh, public uh, with a level of assurance of zero, which means anonymous access. Uh, a second zone that is private that require based authentication. In this case, it's going to be handled by PAM uh, with login password. And the last one that is confidential that require a more advanced authentication model. And in this case, we use an NFC token for the demonstration. So let's have a quick look to um, the configuration of the uh, Secure Gateway. As you can see, it is a standard binder. Uh, we find out the port and uh, the different uh, certificate for the TLS connection. Uh, then we have the configuration of the extension, which is really where we load uh, the Secure Gateway by itself. And in our case, we have uh, two authorities that are defined. Uh, the first one is using PAM for login password authentication. And we can see here that uh, this is a level one of authentication. Uh, the second one uh, use uh, a secure uh, NFC token. And uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, a level of assurance of two. Okay. Um, then uh, to uh, finish what is important, the configuration, we see here the three different zones going from uh, public, public with uh, no authentication to uh, confidential, where we require an authentication level of two. And you can see here on the, on the log that it is a standard binding. Um, so let's try to play with it. Uh, if I click on public, uh, there is no authentication. As we said, it is a level zero authentication. Uh, on the other hand, if I click on private, we can see here on the exchange that uh, it uh, proposed two IDP because uh, the requirement is a level one. Uh, I'm going to select PAM uh, using a Redpesk uh, demo uh, login. And uh, here I am. OK, so I am logged in. Um, obviously, if I request again as a private, I don't have to log a second time. Uh, now I'm going to go on the confidential one. Uh, in this case, I only have one authority because there is only one IDP that supports the LOR2 in my configuration. If I click on NFC, uh, we can see that the only uh, authority uh, is available is the NFC reader. So um, you can see on my camera that if I put the card, uh, I am logged in, okay? And if I remove the card, uh, I am logged out, okay? So uh, we have a, a direct uh, authentication model that uh, impose the user to have the card uh, present. Okay, thank you for your time.
it's time to conclude now. So we now have uh, with Secure Gateway a single uh, access point to the system that is secured through TLS and authentication. The authentication is a uh, very flexible and uh, use widely supported standards. We can also, as benefit, track uh, identity of uh, people that interact with the system. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your interest. I give here a few links. Mm. This one are on uh, OpenID Connect and OS2. And this one are uh, on our company and our product, Red Desk. Well, time for questions now, if you have.